Hello, all and welcome. My name is Margaret. I'm a historical costumer and textile conservator. There's quite a few more of you here, which is really exciting. Um, about once a month, I like to go through my collection of antiques and pick out a couple of pieces to go through with you all. Because I love extant originals, I collect extant originals, and I'm also a textile conservator, as I said, which means I work with extant original garments in my professional life as well. So they are just one of my passions. Additionally, I think we can learn a lot from extant garments in terms of the people that wore them, how they were constructed, and how they functioned. So today I have two exciting objects. I have two Swiss riding corsets from the 1890s. Now these are called a couple of different things, riding corsets, a Swiss riding corset, potentially a Swiss waist, but not in the way that we think of like an 1860s Swiss waist, and not really in the way that you think of like a waist cincher. These are definitely undergarments, not outer garments. Um, but they do have resemblance to those sort of corset-esque type corsetlets or corset belts of the period. Essentially, they're corsets that stop um, right under the right under the boobage, um, and then also stop right at the hip. So they just encase the waist area. So as you see, I have two of them here. Um, this first one is more of a sort of what we would think traditionally as a Swiss waist riding corset or Swiss riding corset. I'm just gonna call them riding corsets. And then this other one is more like a ribbon corset in construction, but it's actually a faux ribbon corset. Both of these I did get online from separate sellers. So let's just dive right in. I guess we'll look at this one first. So if you've never seen one of these videos before or you don't know, I'm not wearing gloves because I need all of the tactile sensation in my hands in order to candle these with the proper care. Many people always comment about the oils in your hands. The fact of the matter is, one, you should wash and dry your hands before and after touching antiques, not only to protect the object, but also to protect yourself. And number two, textiles aren't as susceptible to the oils in our hands as say metal or ceramic or wooden objects are. So it's not as important to protect the object from the oils from your hands, but it is more important to understand when an area might be fragile so we don't tear it. Now, these objects are both in very good condition, so I'm not worried about that today, but I just wanted to point that out because I get that question a lot. So here is this beautiful, what I call like a faux ribbon corset, riding corset. So as you can see, it's made out of this beautiful printed cotton floral fabric. This is, somewhere between a twill and a cotille. Um, not really the herring bone pattern you normally think of as, as a cotille, but sort of that late um, 19th century corset fabric that you see in almost every single corset. It's pr constructed pretty simply. So we have the bust with five pegs. It's a little bent. This one was definitely worn. And it has the floral fabric with these sort of ribbon panels, side panels, back panel and then the back lacing panel as well and just bound in that same black twill. So if we open her up you can see that there is very little lining just on the back panel here and on the side panels. Now the side panels very very flexible boning. This feels like it could be featherweight. It could also potentially be baleen. However, I don't think so. It's either very thin wood splints, probably featherweight boning, but it's not steel. These back two are a more heavy steel. So this is a 24 inch waist. You normally don't lace your corset closed, so this would be worn by someone 25 to 27 inch waist, depending on how much you actually corset down. Depends on your figure. Now there are also, there are no bones next to the lace or the busk, but there is that thick metal busk. But as you can see on the interior of this corset, this corset isn't actually made of strips of fabric. It's rather made of four panels, these four panels with a decorative sort of bias binding on the front. I don't know what we're gonna call this, decorative ribbons on the front um, to make it look like a ribbon corset. Um, if you want to know more about ribbon corsets, um, Nicole Rudolph actually made a great video where she remakes a ribbon corset, so I'll pop that down in the description. But essentially they were just another style of the sort of Swiss riding style corset. So this is a very interesting corset, um, and I 
was very, I was like, oh, when I opened it up at first, I was like, oh, I got a ribbon corset. And then I looked at it closer. I'm like, this is not a ribbon corset. This is something completely different. This is some kind of faux ribbon corset style. But if you're in the market to make a 1890s Swiss riding corset, I think this would be a great option um, because it's essentially the same idea as a ribbon corset, but you can just put just a little bit more extra fabric on there and spruce it up. So that's this one. We're gonna set this aside and we're gonna bring out our other one. So here is our second corset. Again, same sort of Swiss riding style. 1890s as well is kind of the date on this. And this is a more kind of classic style as you can see. This is made of several panels. As you can see, there's this beautiful lap seaming here. So we got a panel here, we have a panel here. Actually, let's look at our thing interior. We have a panel here, a panel here, a panel here, and a panel here. So it's four panels on each side, and these panels are curved, sort of to, to give that shape, um, with a lapped seam. And then the boning channels are applied separately. Now this is fully boned in steel, a very thin spring steel, um, with thicker steel bones in the back lacing panel and then also at the front busk here. This is made of a lighter weight cotton. It's actually a, a plain woven cotton, which is interesting. It's very kind of a light plain woven cotton. Will be great for summer. Not as stiff as the twill that we saw in the first corset there. And it has this wonderful lace edge to go along with it, which a lot of these corsets do have this wonderful lace edge. Um, cotton crocheted lace with a silk ribbon running through it. Now this is a bit more of a complex style. It does not have any stamps on it. Uh, no, it does. Never mind. It does have stamps on it. Um, we have a stamp here. It's very hard to read, but it says, I'm going to pull this up to the camera. I don't know if you can tell what that is. Steel boned. Mild GG steel boned. So if that means anything to you, please put it down in the comments, but we have a mild GG steel boned corset here and it is in waist size. Twenty. Oh, we're back. It's backwards. Twenty-eight. So mild GG steelbone corset in size twenty-eight. So this one's bigger, as we discussed previous. If it's a twenty-eight waist corset, you're normally at least an inch in the back, um, sometimes two inches. So we're looking at a person who has a twenty-nine to a thirty-two inch waist, depending on how much they corset down and how much of a gap in the back that they want. So that is a little bit larger. I do have a corset that is much larger than that. People of all body types existed in history. We just tend to see objects that are smaller survive because they were one not cut down to reused. Two tend to be worn by younger individuals who wouldn't wear them as long. Slash tend to be more fashionable. So things went in and out of trend. And uh, three, they were small, no one more, you know, less people fit into that size and so they tend to stick around longer. It's called survival bias, um, which is a really interesting idea in the world of dress history when examining extant garments. So again, lovely little thing, pretty simple construction, but this one is, I would say more complicated than the other. Again, both have seal grommets. Put them both into frame now. So you can see there. They do seem to be a similar size, but you can tell the difference in construction. You see this one, you know, it would definitely cinch your waist in, but it doesn't have any room for your hips or your bust really. Just kind of, it's gonna, it's gonna pull in. That's kind of the only mechanism it's doing. Versus this one, you can kind of tell there's more shape to it. It'll sort of flare out around the body, really sculpting that torso. Definitely two methods of creating the same garment, both of which are totally valid. Um, however, this one I would say is higher quality if we're going 
down that path. So I hope you enjoyed that little comparison of these two Swiss riding corsets circa 1890. I would love to hear down in the comments if you've ever made one of these or if you have one in your collection and which construction style that you prefer. Let me know. I'm here almost every weekend and I'm also on TikTok and Instagram, both at Costume and Conservation. So you can hit that subscribe button down below if you would like and the like button if you like this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.